Today I feel like I'm revisiting an old friend, because we're talking about the Federal Reserve. Specifically the current chair of the Federal Reserve and whitest guy to be named Jerome, Jerome Powell. The Federal Reserve's job requires predicting the future of the American economy. And let me tell you, that crystal ball has gotten pretty murky recently. If you watch the stock market, it's bouncing around like a six-year-old on three shots of espresso. Today, my goal is to explain what the Federal Reserve is, what it's doing, and what some people think it should do. Yeah, that sounds comprehensive enough. So first, a pretty important question. What is the Federal Reserve? Well, it does a few things, but we're going to talk about its main function today. It's the closest thing you're going to get to the government forcing you to buy things, besides an individual mandate. Don't worry, it's less you have to buy this item, and more a Steam sale telling you you can buy every shooting game ever made for a quarter, because you know what? It's summertime, so you kind of have to buy them. How does the Fed manage to get people to spend or save money? The chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, announced a quarter point interest rate hike today. That means the range for the Fed's benchmark rate is two and a quarter to two and a half percent. All right, you can wake up now. The clip's over. So the Fed controls a benchmark interest rate by moving it up and down about a quarter of a percent after different meetings. I've seen more drama and glacier movements. The drama really starts here because these small adjustments have significant implications on savings rates, loan rates, and spending rates of Americans. With Fed interest rates, there's a cause and effect. And for the sake of keeping this simple, I'm going to be prioritizing effect. Because the cause can get a little unnecessarily complicated for those of you not looking for an intro to monetary policy seminar. Although, when my viewers fall asleep, they don't skip the ads. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in learning more about the cause, though. Because I'd be more than happy to make a video about it. The Fed is faced with essentially three rate choices. Raise rates lower rates, and hunker down. For the sake of this conversation, this rate is almost every rate in the economy. When you raise the rates, the amount you get for putting your money into a savings account goes up. The amount of interest you have to pay on loans goes up. And presidential anger goes up. They want to raise rates again, and I don't really, uh, I am not happy about it. He probably shouldn't be either, because when rates go up, people spend less money and put it into higher interest savings accounts, and loans get more expensive. Things just tend to slow down. On the other hand, if you lower rates, you get less money from having a savings account. Loans are cheap, and everyone just starts throwing money at each other. That's why during recessions, you consistently see rates plummet. Hey, that money you've been saving? Spend it. Take out a loan, spend that too. It'll be a great time. This is also why when you're in an improving economy, the most value you'll probably get from your bank is the free toaster upon opening your 0% interest CD. On the other hand, when the economy is improving, it's generally accepted that you need to raise rates, get people saving, and take some money out of the system to prevent inflation. Now some countries have tried to skip this rate raising step, most recently Turkey, but it seems that in this case conventional knowledge may have triumphed. So now it's time to talk about conflicting ideas about the Federal Reserve interest rate, because different Fed employees have different opinions, and in an odd turn, for Trump to get what he wants, his best argument is to successfully argue that the economy isn't actually all it's hyped up to be, something not supported by the jobs numbers that came out today are, are so huge and have so many positive ramifications, uh, not least of which is labor force participation, uh, hours worked, uh, average hourly earnings, all these things creating income for family households. Most people were truly surprised by how good the employment numbers recently released were, which, unfortunately for Trump in this case, might mean we're in a good economy giving the Fed a legitimate reason to try to encourage people to save some money. So now, instead of listening to me, let's hear what some Federal Reserve people have to say. If only there was some way to understand what the Federal Reserve was thinking when they last raised rates on December 19th. Over the past year, the economy has been growing at a strong pace. 
the unemployment rate has been near record lows, and inflation has been low and stable. All of those things remain true today. Since the September meeting of the FOMC, however, some cross currents have emerged. I'll explain how my colleagues and I are incorporating those cross currents into our judgments about the outlook and the appropriate course of policy. Well, that certainly makes my job easy. Just sit back, relax, and make fun of the information you give to make it palatable. Because, sorry Jerome, but I think your podium might have more stage presence than you. According to the accompanying Fed press release, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System voted unanimously to raise the interest rate. Now, hearing something is unanimous generally inspires confidence. But if anyone out there is a regular Fed watcher, you'd know that, well, when it comes to voting, the Fed tends to agree on a lot of this stuff and vote unanimously. And the real arguments happen before all of this goes to a vote. So that when people who just scan the headlines will think, boy, did they agree a lot. <laughs> well, they must be right. Here's your grain of salt for that statement. Now, there were two issues that the Fed had to factor into their rate adjustment decisions. First, we have seen developments that may signal some softening relative to what we were expecting a few months ago. Growth in other economies around the world has moderated somewhat over the course of 2018. International growth has moderated, which, well, that's a polite way of saying it. My favorite movie is Honey, I Moderated the Kids. Still, the United States economy is on a higher growth and employment trajectory than a lot of our comparable nations. But if the rest of the world is beginning to slow, it could indicate that our economy isn't far behind. The other main drawback that has garnered a lot more attention is... Financial market volatility has increased over the past couple of months, and overall financial conditions have tightened. That is, they have become less supportive of growth. Yeah, if you're using the stock market as a barometer for economic health, you'd probably come to the conclusion that physically, it's healthy, but there are some undiagnosed mental conditions going on. Stock market volatility is definitely making investors a little wary about where to put their money. In response to these two threats, Many FOMC participants had expected that economic conditions would likely call for about three more rate increases in 2019. We have brought that down a bit and now think it is more likely that the economy will grow in a way that will call for two interest rate increases over the course of next year. Only two rate hikes instead of three next year? Policies like these have led the president to make maybe the most hilarious critique of the Federal Reserve I've ever heard. The problem, in my opinion, is treasuries and the Fed. The Fed is going loco. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right here to make it funnier. I've never heard of calling a more boring person loco since Jim from accounting decided to have a second beer at the office Christmas party. There are a few criticisms of the Fed that I need to bring up. Trump says that the Fed's low interest rate is what's been keeping the economy smoking hot. Which, give your massive tax cut, trade deals, and all that money the government spent last year a little credit, bud. A more compelling and interesting argument came from the ex-Federal Reserve Governor Lawrence Lindsay, who correctly stated that the Fed is not supposed to slow down the economy, and it's not supposed to raise rates because too many people are working. It's only supposed to do it in cases of inflation, and right now we don't have inflation. What's he talking about? Well, here's ex-Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke. The Federal Reserve has a dual mandate for monetary policy. Uh, maximum employment, which means economic growth, job creation, that's, that's one part of the dual mandate. The other part, price stability, means low inflation, keeping the value of the currency uh, more or less stable. So that's the Fed's job, to keep inflation at about 2% and to try to maximize employment numbers. These goals didn't fall from the sky, either. It was assigned to the Fed by Congress in 1977. So how's the Fed doing on these goals? With growth remaining next year above its longer-run normal value, the unemployment rate is projected to fall a bit further to 3.5% by the end of 2019. Inflation in the median projection remains near 2%. Lindsay would argue, congratulations, you're accomplishing your goals really well. Take a seat. It's not your job to slow the economy when things start heating up. Unless that heat leads to inflation, of course. Which it normally does. 
But in this upside down world we live in, it's not. So it seems like checkmate right there, right? Ha ha! Fed employees would argue that the record low unemployment, growing wages, and a ton of money in the system, inflation is bound to happen. And despite the fact that the, we can't see it yet, it's out there, waiting, and one day when we least expect it, rah, it's gonna fly up. Also, they have money to be saved so that when the next recession hits, they can drop rates and flood the system with some money, creating a demand for labor, which there's your employment protection. To sum up, the Fed is continuing to raise rates, which boosts savings and tightens access to money, because we're in a pretty good economy. A few falters have led them to lessen the number of future rate hikes, but overall, in the least breaking news report of all time, it seems like everything is just kind of working the way it's supposed to, and the economy is good. So I don't know, go up and up a savings account. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, if you like what you saw, you can subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or you can click right here to see an episode I did on Erdogan and his Federal Reserve. That's kind of about inflation rates. Overall, just remember to like if you like what you saw, and as always, thank you for watching.